Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ulan Gaming, and today we're going to be going over probably the weirdest and most out there build order you can probably do with USA, and that is the USA Cannoneer build order. As always, the build order is designed and tested by me, and I'm extremely happy to bring you this build order as ever. I, I like sharing my weird goofy shit that I come up with in this game. Now. This strategy originally used to be the outlaw strategy you see USA players use frequently for owl hoots and cowboys. However, after various nurse to cowboys, nurse to the population room provided from advanced taverns, and moving the dance hall to the fourth age, the outlaw strategy has generally fallen out of favor for me, and I almost never do this strategy except for in dire need where I just really need some age two, some age two dragoons. Uh, instead, I modified the build order to accommodate a completely different and unexpected type of play, and that is what I bring you today, the Cannoneer strategy. First, let's talk about Cannoneers and why we are using them. Cannoneers are the most unique mercenary unit in the entire game. They are a mercenary version of Abbas guns and have similar multipliers and properties, having a long-ranged, fast-shooting siege damage attack that's fantastic for dealing with heavy and light infantry alike, as well as dragoons. They're essentially a falconet in infantry format that's not weak against dragoons. Uh, but there are two things in particular that make cannoneers stand apart from the rest of the mercenaries in the game. The first is that they are the only mercenaries available to be trained in the Second Age, as every other mercenary in the entire game is unavailable until Age 3 at the earliest. This will allow us to mass them and push into our opponents very, very quickly. Uh, the second big point in their favor is that they cost one population, making them not only the only mercenary unit to cost one pop, but also the only mercenary to cost less population than their normal unit counterpart, the Abyss Gun. Now, let's compare Abyss Guns to Cannoneers. The cost for these units is borderline identical in Villager Seconds, with Abyss Guns costing 50 food and 100 coin, and Cannoneers costing 140 coin, the same as a Cowboy. However, because Cannoneers cost one resource, being coin, they are much easier to macro for and therefore mass. Uh, Abyss Guns and Cannoneers have identical HP and range resistance, 130 HP, 20 range resistance. Uh, that means with an equal population size, uh, a, a mass of cannoneers is twice as durable as a mass of obus guns, because there's twice as many of them and they have you know, the same HP. Uh, we can also train them faster than obus guns because of USA's inspiring flag, further leading to this disparity of durability. As for attack, obus guns have 40 siege damage with 3.5 rate of fire compared to Cannoneer's 28 siege damage at a slightly faster fire rate of 3. Mathematically, the timings match up at 21 seconds, with Cannoneer's doing 7 shots versus Abyss Gun 6. In that time, an Abyss Gun has dealt 240 damage, and a Cannoneer has dealt 196. This makes Abyss Guns have slightly higher damage output from Cannoneer's, but the fact that we can mass twice as many Cannoneer's as Abyss Guns means that once we get our mass going, it is MUCH more threatening than an Abyss Gun mass of equal size. Uh, in this regard, per population, we have a unit that is more durable, damaging, and easier to mass than Abyss Guns, and Abyss Guns were already scary enough in Age 2 if they were built around. It is worth being mentioned that this strategy is only for use in team games when you have an ally able to compensate for your lack of anti-cavalry. Unfortunately, we will not have the population space to field any cowboys to make up for this lack, and are therefore reliant on an ally to make up for our weakness until we can get to age 3 and gain access to more mercenaries. Additionally, the more astute of you will have noticed the obvious hole in this strategy, and that is that... Um, USA doesn't have any cannoneer shipments, nor any shipment or tech that allows us to train cannoneers. And you would be correct. This strategy is completely reliant on you rolling cannoneers as one of your three random mercenaries at the beginning of the game. But fret not, as this does not actually require any resource investment to see if you're able to do this strategy. You don't need to build a saloon to find out. Uh, thanks to an incredibly little-known mechanic added to DE several patches ago, I'll, I'll go over in a second. But honestly, I don't really mind this hurdle, as it honestly makes me feel like a badass to know when I win with this strategy. It's because I adapted to the map and made the most out of the resources given to me. 
Uh, so with all that out of the way, let's get into it. To start the strategy, collect your first food crate and queue one villager. As soon as that villager is queued, we need to find out whether or not we can perform the strategy or not. So select a settler and hover your mouse over the saloon button. The details will pop up for the saloon actually tells you what mercenaries are available at the saloon before you build it. I know for a fact several of you watching are mind blown at this revelation right now, as almost nobody knows this. It was added to the game in a patch last year and is like my best friend. Uh, you all can always know whether or not you should do a mercenary strategy base a, a mercenary based strategy with any civilization before investing any resources into it. All you have to do is hover over the tavern button and read what mercenaries are going to be available at your tavern. If you see cannoneers listed in the available units, proceed with the strategy. If you don't, go watch my marine video linked below and do that one instead or something. Uh, in any case, you should be able to find out in the first 10 seconds whether you're not or not you're going to be doing this strategy. Assuming you have cannoneers listed in the tavern, collect up all your starving resources and build a house in a market, and then set every villager to hunts for your age up. We will not be doing a French immigrant start with this build order. Instead, our first card is going to be Capitalism for an inc infinite coin trade I honestly find this uh, the much more stable option for this strategy than the French immigrants, for the simple reason that the trickle is infinite. Uh, with this strategy, we have enough coin income to be able to fully complete our first five cannoneers right from the beginning anyways, so we don't have any issues uh, with coin gather or massing. Therefore, all the three Courier de Bois will accomplish is draining the map's natural coin mines even faster, and this strategy already burns through them like nothing else. So I, I generally prefer capitalism over the French immigrant. Uh, you can go with French immigrants if you please, but in all the testing I've done, I've found capitalism to be the better option. Now, age up with 14 vills with Pennsylvania for a military wagon and the advanced church card later. Uh, set six to food and everyone else to coin, and uh, j just kind of keep it that way for the rest of the game, or at least for the foreseeable future. This strategy is exceedingly simple and has a very easy economy. Mercs only cause coin, so more coin equal good. It's not rocket science. In transition, we are sending Dutch immigrants. This provides us a bank and an increase to our coin gather rate by 5%. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about this, so I'll, while I do, I'll put the rest of the deck on the screen. Uh, if you've watched my Marine video, you will know that I do not like this card, as I think it's a, a poor noob trap in most cases, due to the incredibly high cost of 350 coin. It takes an extremely long time from when it arrives to pay that back, and even longer to make the 300 resource profit Age 1 shipments are valued at. And only afterwards do you start really profiting from the shipment. In most USA games, if you send this card, it means you don't start getting benefit from it until as late as the 9 minute mark if you send it as your second card, in which case there's a good chance the game has already been decided. However, as I mentioned in that video, it's good under specific circumstance under the specific circumstances of an outlaw or mercenary build order, and that is what we're doing here. In this case, having another source of infinite coin is invaluable, and we have enough settlers constantly working on coin mines throughout the game to even make the 5% gather rate worth it. So, in this case, it's a necessity. Uh, as for other cards in the deck, uh, we have Silversmith, Hamiltonian Economics, and other standard USA upgrade cards you see in a variety of decks. We also have most unit upgrade cards, uh, and this is simply because we want to be more likely to boost the stats of whatever units we end up making, regardless of what they are. We can't plan around what specific mercenaries we're going to get, so we're including as many unit upgrades as possible to choo pick and choose the upgrades that apply to the units we do roll. Uh, most importantly under these cards is Springfield Armory and Continental Rangers. Uh, Continental Rangers, fun fact, actually boost Cannoneer stats, and they also gain benefit from counter-infantry rifling from the arsenal, giving them a 2.5 times multiplier against heavy infantry, with 28 attack in the second age. That's not broken at all. Uh, for now though, we are done with the deck, so let's get back to the strategy. After spending 350 coin on the bank wagon, your next priority is to spend coin at your market to secure 100 wood for a house. Additionally, if you've gotten 75 wood from treasures, research placer mines at the, at the market. If you're close to 75 wood, it's okay to move one or two villagers to wood to finish that out, 
but if you didn't get enough wood treasures, don't bother. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of the market upgrades later. In any case, get a house built ASAP. As you hit age two, your military, you're, you'll receive your military wagon and send it over to your forward base point. Try to use it. it obviously, we're going to use it to make a tavern, but try to use it to secure a coin mine uh, towards the middle of the map. Additionally, before it starts building, place the banner at the foundation's base in order to increase the building, uh, the building speed and the training speed at your tavern. Uh, while your wagon is traveling, collect the 100 XP crates from aging and send your third card the Philadelphia Convention. This gives us a church wagon and access to the unique church upgrades available to the U.S. of A. Uh, we're only interested in one in particular, however, and that's the Pennsylvania Pound. Uh, this gives us a massive coin trickle equivalent to another bank in exchange for slightly lower gather rates from estates. Fortunately, we will be on coin mines throughout most of the game, if not all of the game, and this won't be an issue. Uh, one of the reasons the Cannoneer strategy is better than normal USA outlaws is because of the low population of is because the, the low population of Cannoneers negates the need for an immediately uh, for an immediate mass of population space. Normally, at this point, a USA player making outlaws would be sending using their third card to send it either advanced saloons or 700 wood. Uh, but not us. Our singular house that we purchased will give us enough population to support our first 10 entire units before we need another one. This means we can spend our third shipment booming with even more income and really take off, giving us a far more stable income and unit production than any outlaw build can. Now, after getting the Pennsylvania Pound upgrade, we have three separate infinite coin gather rate incomes, and the villagers on the mines, but, and between those uh, and the villagers on the mines at the faster gather rates, the coin is flying in. It comes in so fast, it's easier and more effective to just buy wood at the market instead of chopping it whenever you need a house. I do this on repeat throughout the games, allowing me to pay more attention to microwing my military in the big battles to come and usually don't start chopping wood until far later in the game. Uh, as soon as your saloon is built, uh, start training cannoneers. You need to be able to fully- you should be able to fully complete a batch of five, even if you start training one the moment the tavern is constructed. Your coin gather rate is just that high. Uh, start to be aggressive as soon as you need, but you need to do this no later than your fourth batch when your military is at its best compared to other people this early in the game. Uh, from here, your next shipment is very match-dependent. Uh, you can send advanced saloons for more population space and more military buildings, or silversmith for coin gather, and even more importantly, gather yields. Uh, I highly recommend this shipment, as, uh, as getting as much out of you as you can out of each coin mine is imperative for your success. You can send 700 wood if you want to, and never have to worry about population space again. Uh, it just build seven houses with it. Uh, you could send the uh, you, you you could send Hamiltonian economics, but only do so if you haven't researched placer mines by this point. Uh, if you got the the treasures you need for 75 wood to get placer mines, then you already have the most important upgrade uh, already. And Hamiltonian has far less value since most of your economy is on coin, and you've already gotten half of the upgrades for it. Uh, however, the improvement to, to wood buy rates alone is also worth uh, is enough to make the shipment worth sending for our strategy. So it's up to you. I often send it anyways, even if I've already researched placer mines. But if I have, I usually just ship it a little bit later. Uh, Springfield Armory gives you buffs to your military, including a massive multiplier boost against heavy infantry, and the capital is great for transitioning to age three. I mean, really, the world is your playground with this build order, and do whatever you feel you need to. Uh, when you're ready to move to H3, it's literally as simple as buy a bunch of food and you'll start your age up within like 30 seconds of deciding you want to go there. Uh, once you get to H3, uh, you have more mercenaries and cards available to you, so make the most of them. Uh, this build order is extremely oppressive in team games. And if you have somebody pushing with and if you have somebody pushing with you, this often decides the match extremely fast. Uh, so fast, in fact, it took me forever, like a week and a half, to get good-ish footage for this video, simply because 90% of the games where I actually get cannoneers are over so fast, it's not ideal for a video. Uh, and even in this one, uh, the, the, the India player quit really quickly. 
Uh, legit, the only hard fast cards in this build order are the first three coin trickles, and everything else is played by ear. It's, it's an extremely simple strategy that uses the starting military wagon USA gets and the explorer flag to its maximum. Even so, similar build orders can surely be eked out with other civilizations. This video is more just a love letter to cannoneers than anything else, and to say that you should absolutely look at what's available in the tavern each game. You never know when you can take advantage of some goofy strategy and get a win out of it. Pay attention and take advantage of your maps. That's all, folks. So that'll boost my cannoneers. Ooh, here we go. <gasps> Ooh! Let's get some lanch next in. Yep, yeah, there it is. GG. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.